right, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, Game Source. LakersBall.com and the Podcast Network. It is sincerely appreciated. I, before I go ahead with my interview with Joe Sorrell, I did want to go ahead and drop a note to everyone out there. Uh, someone who I interviewed this past week, Alex Fleming, who covered the Orlando Magic, who did a great interview with me, and I'm so indebted to him for doing so. Unfortunately, we found out through social media today that he had passed away. Uh, this past evening actually he i he he actually went to the jacksonville jaguars game it gave no inclination that anything was wrong talked about it showed off some highlights there of the game itself but i was told that he passed away over the evening so i just wanted to go ahead and send a special note of condolences to his family it was truly tragic i was hoping i could get to speak to him again over the course of the season on the orlando magic and nba I will tell you as a personal note off air about the fact that I had a great conversation with him off air about all the things he was planning on doing and covering out there in the Orlando, Florida area. And I know right now just to see his social media flooded with just homages of respect for him and the work that he did and all the lives he touched out there. I didn't know him very well outside of that conversation I had with him. And I was hoping to go ahead and grow a relationship with him. So I feel truly saddened by that. But again, my biggest uh, thoughts and prayers and condolences are with this family right now. So I wanted to go ahead and say thank you, Alex, for everything you did for the Lakers fast break and Godspeed. But it is the Lakers fast break. It's Gerald Glasser coming right back at you here. Do want to go ahead and tell everybody that we do not have the best of news right now for Lakers during their training camp and the four preseason games. Not only have they not looked competitive for most of those four preseason games so far, which, as I'm constantly being told, it's just preseason. And in fact, tonight, Brooklyn Nets, they didn't look competitive tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers at all. So that tells you right there, and they're the betting favorite. So one of the things I did want to discuss, though, with my guest is THT, Talon Horton Tucker. I had said on the previous show that it was it was diagnosed as a sprain first off, and he would be on a day-to-day st- status. But unfortunately, an MRI and further research has shown that he has a torn ligament in his thumb, and he's going to need and he's going to necessitate surgery. So that's going to be a problem because he'll be out for several weeks. So we'll discuss this. Plus, also as well. How has the Lakers looked to Joe Sorrell of LakersBall.com? So we're going to get him on the line now. Joe, great to have you here. I know you're bummed about your Dodgers. You couldn't find the offense, but still, the Lakers are coming around the corner with their regular season, but they won't have THT to start with them. I was expecting these injuries to happen later, (laughs) especially with guys like Trevor Ariza. And you can't um, say it's old, just old, because THT is only no, 20. No, it's – it's um, The injury bug has already got us. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how to explain this without being vicious. I, I had promised the crew at Lakers Ball I wouldn't be vicious. And, again, I, I feel like I've been pretty tame in the shows that we've done because I'm usually pretty brutal off, off, off camera. But um, – then I, you know, since, since yesterday's game, I kind of started thinking about some things. And it, you, you, you got to look at some of the good stuff, too. I, I'm very happy that Carmelo, um, Carmelo looks fresh. I mean, he looks. Well, he, had, he had a bad game on Friday. but He yesterday, did, but. Yesterday, he did very well. He did very well. He's, he's, he's you know, and he said it. LeBron and, and Carmelo kind of set the table a little bit already. LeBron's, you know, announcement that the preseason doesn't mean anything to him. 
he cares more about the practices and being able to teach. You know, I, I kind of kind of balked at that. I'm not really a, I'm not really a supporter of that kind of mentality. Now, I'm not wanting them to go full bore on a, on a preseason game and get hurt, but it looks like they've played pretty badly and they still got hurt, you know. And and as far as the injuries, you know, this THT thing is a fluke. You know, there's nothing you can really – I've had that injury playing basketball where the ball hits me on the thumb the wrong way and I've had a balloon to a ball. Yeah, this this is this is the result. This finger right here is a result of maybe 50 just jam fingers. Jam fingers in, in, in playing so many basketball. So uh I, I don't I don't look at the THT injury as anything other than a freaking occurrence. The only issue I have is 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 it is it going to hinder him his shooting uh, when he does come back? Is he going to compensate? Is he going to, you know, is it going to be in the back of his mind? If it's not, then I, you know, in, in well, a few the thing is he's not going to get some reps first off. Yeah, right? someone yeah. who who needs all the reps he can get in practice. This is going to put him a little bit behind. Yeah, and it doesn't you know it's going to take him probably. Let's say if he's out, let's say I don't know. Ligaments are a different beast. Than a broken bone, so you're looking at maybe let's say three months before he's healed, maybe, maybe another I'd two. Say, I'd say at least eight weeks, six to eight weeks. Okay, so if he if he goes eight weeks and it's healed, then it's going to take him, you know, maybe maybe a couple months to get acclimated again. I don't know. That that's going to be one we're going to have to watch. Uh, I I don't know. I don't I don't know. He he he's. He's an integral part of the game of the of the team, but I, I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, at least not. But not it does hurt right your depth again. Yeah. Someone that we yeah. hope with that nice big contract that he just signed over the off season, about ten million plus per year, that he was going to take that next step. So far in preseason, he hasn't taken that next step. It still seems to me like a potpourri of who do you want at that off guard position? Do you want Ellington? Do you want? None. Do you want THT or do you want Malik Monk? And all of them have had their opportunities to succeed, but then all of them had their opportunities where they failed. Uh, you know, Malik Monk, who did so well in the first two games, did not do well in Golden State and now is hurt with a groin injury. And he'll be hopefully ready to start the beginning of the season. That's kind of tenuous right now. You have Kendrick Nunn, who I was hoping to really would stand out because of how he played in Miami. Hasn't done that as of yet, but now the opportunities could be in place where he could get it. Wayne Ellington, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Wayne Ellington's game because just really on the defensive end, as we saw last night, he just gets lost and he gets beat quite constantly. And now that he's an older player, you're really counting on him to do the one thing well that he should be doing well, and that's shooting the three. And right now it just looks like a tough deal. Kent Bazemore looks like he's solidifying himself somewhere in the starting lineup, so maybe that could be the case if they may put him at guard opposite of Russ, uh, Russell Westbrook and then just starting a center. But I know everybody, including myself, almost everybody, does not want to go ahead and continuously start a DeAndre Jordan besides Anthony Davis. We'd rather have Anthony Davis start the five. That's a lot of information, and again, it's uh, Frank Vogel's going to have to tinker a little bit on this. But the reality is, oh, I'm sure he's got the order of the Tylenol right next. You know, the, the the you know uh, the example right the example the example I use in any LeBron uh, led team is I use this analogy, and, and and basically LeBron James is the Peyton Manning of his sport, so. What that means is when Peyton Manning was playing quarterback, it was the Peyton Manning show. Uh, if he was not playing, everything went to crap, <laughs> you know, because the system is built off of LeBron. LeBron is the system. Peyton Manning was the system. As great as Tom Brady and Ben Roethlisberger and all these, you know, future Hall of Famers are, they were somewhat into a system, whereas guys like, Peyton Manning was, or, or, and LeBron James are, are the system no matter where they go. So if that integral part isn't there, you, you see, you see some, some, you see too many, you know, issues there. 
Um, the argument is always, well, Anthony Davis and, 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 and Russell Westbrook and all this. I'm like, well, it, there's a, in a team sport, it's hard to diagnose what's more important than this. Like, you know, Michael Jordan was the one, the two, and the three for the Bulls, but he, if he doesn't have Scottie Pippen, he's probably not winning six titles. Does he win maybe one or two? Probably, but he doesn't win six. So there's a lot of working parts here. But when it comes to, let's say, LeBron, a LeBron-led team and he's not playing, you're going to get – it's it's very hard to cover that guy in a system that is really his system. Frank Vogel isn't known as a system guy other than on defense. So it, it's it's just hard to – and when you got your main guy saying, I don't really care about the preseason, this is the result. You know, you're not seeing – a lot of good basketball. I, I was very encouraged by Kent Bazemore. Uh, there was some word that he was going to uh, likely be the, the the number two uh, on the starting lineup, and and it made sense. He's got the defense and the offensive repertoire, you know, and especially yesterday, I think he had four steals. And as far as THT, I think I think. I, I don't want to put too much pressure on him. I'm not expecting a lot. Uh, I'm expecting improvement. I was expecting him to take it to the next level to earn his money. But I'm also a little real, you know, realistic in that a lot of times when a, when a, when a, a good team, especially if you're playing good teams, when they start to hone in on your, your, your skill set and you kind of come out of nowhere – you know, it starts to even the playing field a little bit and it becomes harder for that player to be effective. And we can't forget that THD is a second round pick. Yes, he's played well. Yes, he's played well under pressure at a young age. But that's the thing, too, is he's still young. You know, I think it's better, you know, when he comes back, you ease him into the situation and hopefully, you know, come playoff time, he'll have maybe one or two games where he becomes very, very valuable for that particular game. Uh, Trevor Ariza, I, I I had a I didn't say this out loud, but I have a small feeling that we're not going to see Trevor Ariza play for the Lakers this year. He I, I just I don't know I have that feeling. I don't know if he's going to make it. If he does come back and play, it's not going to be long. It's going to be kind of like when Vladi Divac came back in 05, where there was a little bit of excitement because Shaq had just left and Vladi's you know this passing center who's coming back home and all that. It's almost like a similar thing where. You know, it's done. I think it's done now. I think the body's telling Trevor, Trevor, all that, you know, he's been on, what, 12 teams, all that traveling, all that work, all that amazing games that he's had. I think it's starting to come down to maybe him needing to think about something else to do. Um, uh, yesterday's game, in, in a nutshell, was kind of an embarrassment, just like the other three. <laughs> Uh, Russell Westbrook looked terrible for the second game. In and that's what I want to ask you is Russell Westbrook, if so far in two games, uh, you know, he has more turnovers than points at this point in time with, with what, 15 right now. And that's kind of concerning if you're a Los Angeles Lakers fan. He has obviously more an assist right now than turnovers and assists. It's just a problem where he doesn't seem very comfortable in the system at all. And the shots that he is taking don't even look like they're going to go. They're not even coming close. They're, yeah. you know, airballing from 15 feet like he did in Golden State yesterday. That we saw the game yesterday. It just it looked like he was totally off his game as well. So it does not seem that he's looking very comfortable in this game. He's not a great shooter. Obviously, he's one of the poorest three point shooters of all time. And but the mid range is supposed to be something he can make somewhat, and he's not even doing that right now. There's going to need to be some decisions made with Russell Westbrook, uh, and it's going to have to come from him, obviously. Carmelo had, had highlighted that, you know, this is going to take a minute. I think Russell's too fast for what needs to get done, and you can't just turn off that speed when you've been doing it for however long he has. But this is the first time Russell Westbrook is legitimately on a title team since 2016. You can say what you want when he was in Houston. I, I, I never, not even for a second, thought that team had any chance of winning anything with Harden and him on the same team. But in 2016, they had a 3-1 lead over the 73-9 and Golden State Warriors. A couple shots, they're in the finals. 
who knows what happens after that. So I'm not going to sit back and say that Russell Westbrook can't play championship ball. I think he can, but there's going to need to be, there's going to need to be some tweaks he's going to have to make. And Frank Vogel is going to have to figure out where he's best in terms of the value of the team. Now, a little bit of it, and again, it's it's a preseason game. I'm not going to make this assessment now. I'm going to maybe take a little guess on what might be the best thing once they're in 20 or 30 games. And the, the benefit of, of them having to kind of start slow in this particular season is that the, the schedule is somewhat soft at the beginning of the year, so they'll be able to run the kinks out uh, without worrying about, you know, cop, the competition being overwhelming. But Russell Westbrook... I think his best situation will definitely be with the second unit. He can start, but I think running and gunning with the young guys might be where he's most valuable. Now, as the season progresses and you're, you know, the playoffs come and you have your three stars in there, you know, he's going to obviously be there at the end of the game, maybe. Uh, if you need shooting, there's going to be need to be some decision making there. Uh, can he open it up? Can he can he not clog the lane? The lanes were clogged nonstop this last game, especially this last game. I mean, I don't even know what I don't, I don't know how they were going to do anything. And it's 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 an easy setup. If I'm an opposing coach and I'm like, well, Westbrook can't shoot, Dwight Howard can't shoot, AD shoots okay, LeBron when he's playing, you know, he he shoot he's been shooting really really well. Uh, the last couple of years, but is you know he's not you know he's not a sniper either. And then you got let's say Ken Bazemore, Kent Bazemore in there. You'll take your chances with him as well. So the Lakers are going to have to decide on how on how they're going to be able to mimic the 2020 offense, which is basically run and gun, get to the hoop, score baskets that way, and then hit timely shots. I've been saying this on all the shows that we've been doing, and if they continue to play the way they've been playing, which is out of character and out of the, the talent that they have, you know, it's not going to work. And maybe they're trying some things. And again, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm trying to make excuses for it, but I, I don't like, even in preseason games, I think there's a mentality that I like to see, uh, at least somewhat of something, you know, if, if these went down the wire and they lost, they'd be like, okay, they're, you know, they're just this kind of how it went. But the fact that they're down 20 points almost every game, I don't like that. I don't like it. Why are they doing that? And to me, this next couple games, I think they need to kind of use them as a a springboard to the to, to the season's first game. You know, especially the first game that they're playing. I mean, they're, those guys will run them out of the building if they they're, they're not ready. So it, it, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to endure some things here. You know, seventy wins and all that. I, I thought that was hilarious when I kept hearing. Them. I'm like, look. All I want them to do is get a top four seed, be rested, and ready to win a championship. I don't care about any records. I don't care about scoring records. Uh, the only reason why I would want AD to win Defensive Player of the Year is because that would likely translate that the Lakers are having probably a dominant season. So other than that, I'm just like, find the kinks, work the kinks, do whatever it is that you need to do. Dealing with injuries is part of the game, as long as it's not the main guys. But at least now you have a third guy there that can kind of, you know, in case LeBron, I don't know, twists an ankle and he's out for a couple of weeks or if AD hurts his shoulder, needs to be out a week. At least you have someone like Russell Westbrook that can kind of cover some things a little bit and you can open up some things for him. So <laughs> the grade for the preseason right now is a D minus. And we'll see if it creeps up to C by the end of the preseason. Well, we've got tomorrow – or as you're listening to this, that day, Tuesday, they're supposed to play all three together for the first time, Westbrook, James, and Davis, in the same time, the same place, the same game, which is going to be awesome. We're, we're finally going to see the big three that's going to play together. But I'm hoping that Russell Westbrook won't – I don't know, maybe he's forcing it, trying too hard at this point. Maybe he's nervous being back in L.A. for the first time in many years since he was with UCLA. I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like he's he's doing as well. But again, it, like you said, they could come to the point where if he goes on one of those runs like we saw last year, 
for the second half of the season in Washington, where he became a, for the time, like the MVP Westbrook. If you get a dash of that during points of the season, that could be all the Lakers need to go ahead and have a strong season. But I'm hoping for that more in the playoff run. I'm hoping that he'll gradually get accustomed to what's going on with the Lakers, get accustomed to the offense, get into the schemes, understand to play better defense, and then by the time the playoffs come in, really be able to turn it up a notch and give you everything that he can give you, hopefully enough that, like we saw last season in Washington, that he can give you that spark and what you need. So that's what I'm hoping for. The I'm run sure and gun. Yeah, yeah, the run and I'm gun. Sure, is I'm not sure if we're going to get it, but I'm hoping for it. And well, really, you know, yeah. I'd love to see Because right now we're not getting anything out of him yet, but that doesn't mean there's still a long way to go in the season, and I'm looking for better things from him. The run and gun is going to be key. You know, if you've got AD on one side, LeBron on the other, the, the, you know, other than Magic Johnson, uh, in terms of someone who controls the ball, because you can say Tim Duncan as well, there's no player that's ever played in the NBA that I've seen. I'm sure there's, you know, Bill Russell was great and, uh, you know, Dolph Shea seniors was was great back in the 50s and 60s, but I never saw those guys play. From the three guys that I have seen play, Magic, Tim Duncan, and LeBron, those three players are the most unselfish mega superstars I've ever seen ever. I mean, this is I don't – and when you have that, it's not out of question that LeBron – if LeBron sees that if – Westbrook needs to be the guy with the ball, and he and that's where he's the most effective. LeBron will adapt his game to accommodate that, not only from a winning standpoint and an execution standpoint, but Russell Westbrook is an emotional player, and if you're feeding into that emotion and it's going in the positive way, LeBron is going to allow that to happen. And then you got AD, who's kind of just, you know, he doesn't let no – you know, AD's ex- – I hate saying people are extremely smart because it, it sounds like it kind of sounds contrived and, and, and condescending and kind of patronizing. But AD is so smart that it's it's it, it's it's like I don't worry about it. I don't worry about him hearing things. Oh, are you the third option? Are you the second option? You never hear that. And that's why they ended up winning the last couple of years, because he doesn't let that kind of nonsense get into his head. So now he's not going to be a problem with. Hey, am I getting my touches? LeBron is obviously not going to be that, that that guy. So now when you acclimate Russell Westbrook and you know where his most effective game is, which is what he did in the second half last year, which is just run and gun and get you those triple dubs and just keep everybody excited. And any, any NBA player, any player in the NBA, if they're running, knowing that the guy with the ball is going to give them the ball maybe to score, they're going to be even more motivated to go. And you have a you have a few young guys, you know. Baysmore's not that young, but he's still young. You got Monk, you got none, you got guys there that you can, you know, start feeding and getting them in the zone into that mindset. Hey, if I run and gun and fill my lanes, I'm gonna get that ball from from Westbrook. And if Westbrook gets it to LeBron, LeBron's gonna get it to me. Everybody's gonna kind of get a chance to eat. It's it's going to be I, – I don't, I don't know how long it's going to take to get acclimated, but I don't, I don't see how it won't work as long as the main guys are healthy um, because I think they'll figure out that what, what's the best options. You know, shooting – I don't care how many times I hear that Russell Westbrook can't shoot. No one can shoot in L.A. They've, no one has ever been able to shoot in L.A. Glenn Rice came to the Lakers. He couldn't shoot. So forget about the shooting. We just need – we need them to play defense consistently and have more points at the end of the game, and let's go win a championship. And I, I if they're healthy, I don't I don't see how that doesn't happen, especially when it comes to prime time. They, you know, the switch is going to be there uh, if they're healthy. Once again, I'm speaking to Joe Sorrell. you got to go ahead and check out what he's doing as Ox1947 – at LakersBall.com. Be part of the conversation there today at LakersBall.com. But before we head on out, it's been a great conversation, and I appreciate your positivity. You and Laker Tom from Lakerholics.com have both been very positive on the Lakers, no matter what these early preseason games dictate. 
And if you're in Brooklyn right now, you're probably feeling the same way. Oh, no, what's going on because of all the situation? And they looked awful today in, in Philadelphia. But you know what? Like you said, it is just preseason, so we got to take things with a grain of salt. Boy, and that – yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's that stuff in, in Brooklyn – Oh boy, I I had a I had some conversations on Laker Ball about Kyrie Irving and uh, the whole vaccine thing, and you know, like everything else, the vaccine turns into the personal side of things instead of the the game, and yeah, you gotta get you gotta get checked, you gotta get checked by the mods, and you you know, gotta respect that. But you know, the reality is, it's always something with Kyrie. I mean, if you eliminate the vaccine situation. It would have been something else. I mean, that's just... Well, maybe Bill Shatner can go ahead <laughs> yeah. from space and call Kyrie Irving and tell him, actually, if the Earth is flat or round. How about that? Did he really say that, or was it yeah. was he missing... Did he really said that? Yeah. I, I, I've read so many things about it, but my brain... My he brain really is was, trying to give really him a shot. A believer in and the I, 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 yeah, I don't know I wanna, if he still is, but I well, know he was at one so, time. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with with Kyrie, with with especially people like Laker fans, let's say, who love Kobe Bryant. Kobe loved Kyrie. He loved Kyrie Irving. Yeah. And great. the reason why he loved Kyrie is because Kyrie's got a little bit of black mamba in him. He's well, I'm going to tell you right now, if right? he was on the Lakers, I would love it because the fact of what he can do on the court, on the court. But we know that's not enough. We know that's not enough, especially in this situation. So now you're caught in that. He was a 50, 40, 90 player last season. That's a rarity. Well, again, and then you got to be sensitive to the fact that there might be some mental issues there. You know, there might be some mental health issues, right? That's a big topic now in the world. And you have to be respectful of that. And are you going to, yeah, are you going to be the, (laughs) are you going to be John Gruden or are you going to be the, yeah, somebody so, else. <laughs> Vegas so, is out of coach right now. Oh boy, I, I was I, it, that story turned. Yeah, into... let's just, just let's just move on from that one. Okay? Yeah. So like... all I'll tell you about right now with Vegas and Raiders is the <laughs> Legion Stadium is a nice place to play in. That's all I'll say because I, I visited it a couple weeks ago and I had a good time there. But need I digress for the Raiders? They're still three and two, so Vegas fans are excited. But again, we're looking more towards tomorrow with the NHL season starting and where the Golden Knights can go right now. Immediately, the Raiders are automatically right now pushed off to the side. That's how important the Golden Knights are in this town. The Raiders get pushed to the side, even if they fire their coach for what happened in the past, but which, you know, it, it is what it is out there. So, but before we head it out, my friend, I wanted to go ahead and make sure you push uh, the what's going on with LakersBall.com. Let everybody know what's going on with LakersBall.com. I know you got a, guys have a lot of conversations going on there, and I know the it, like you said, it gets hot and heavy. Uh, you know, Ben Simmons is coming back to Philadelphia. I don't know how that's going to be, just like the most awkward place in the NBA, even more so in Brooklyn. Well, the the Ben Simmons thing, there's no choice. You're you're it's you, all you're about the cash. You know, in the end, it's just like again going back to what happened with uh, uh, Wiggins. Uh, in Golden State, it's it's you 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 acclimate or you you don't get paid. And Ben Simmons is one of those players that isn't going to stand stand his ground like let's say Kyrie Irving. He's he's you know he's all about the what it's about. <laughs> uh, these athletes are so now starting to get used to the fact that their complaints will get them what they want. And I think Daryl Morey, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against Daryl Morey, and I'm not a fan of his either. I'm not a. I'm. Not, I'm in the middle with him. I don't have anything negative or positive about what he does, um, but I will give him props that he's saying, "Look, I'm not trading. You can do whatever you want." Uh, kind of reminds me of Jerry Buss. Jerry Buss, when Kobe's like, I'm, "I play in Pluto. I want to go to Chicago." Doctors, like, I'm not trading. Are you nuts? Trade Shaq one year and then trade. Ch- Kobe three years later, I go, no, this is the Lakers. We don't do that stuff. So I will give Daryl Morey props that he stood his ground and essentially forced Ben Simmons to grow up, come back to Philly. These guys were, what, three years away, three years ago, they were this close to winning a title by by a four four dinks on a, on, a, on, a, on a rim, right? So how about stop, you know, 
how about stop being little children and let's figure out a solution here. This guy's got the talent to be great. You got Joel Embiid who can handle the Philly media, who's a great player. How about now Doc Rivers needs to kind of, I don't know what's going on with Doc, but Doc needs to start doing something else, man, to make these guys play better. I don't know. Is he overrated? Is he past his time? I'm not going to say anything because, like Frank Vogel, he does have that one championship on his resume. But, you know, there's been more than one occasion where he has faltered in the playoffs. And we'll leave it at that. But again, the, the, the thing is, there's always, you know, uh, you know, when you look at, let's say, uh, Greg Popovich, his he faltered really badly in the 13 uh, finals. When yeah, he took out some titles, has he won though? True, but my, my thing is, is we're none of no one's ever perfect. You know, look at Mariano Rivera. Mariano Rivera, and this is this is it's sad that this is how I think, but I always think, you know, just you know, Kobe even reiterated, and that's that's how you think. You know, Kobe doesn't think about five; he thinks about the two he lost. Mariano Rivera was up two one in the two thousand one Game Seven World Series, and he ended up losing. And then, but of George course, we're flashing those rings around. He's telling you he's a perfect guy. Well, and that's that has a lot to do with why Jordan is the greatest because he never, they'll, they'll, they can sit there and say, well, he lost to the Magic in the second round and he didn't beat the Celtics in the playoffs. And I'm talking about when you're at your once up, he got to the finals, once, once he got to the finals, when Jordan was at it at his peak, okay. And he was at the highest ground where it matters the most. He never failed. That's why he's got this. That's why I have said for years, not only for Kobe, but for Shaq. If Kobe wins those two titles and Shaq wins the two titles that he lost, one in Orlando and one in uh, uh, against Detroit for the Lakers, it's, it's, it's almost a done deal that Shaq would have the number one spot for all-time centers. I have no doubt. Kobe, Kobe's sitting next to Jordan at this point. You can debate who's better and all that all day, but he's sitting next to Jordan, and you can debate who's number one, right? So when you're looking at performance, how, when, at the highest, you know, peak, you know, going back to the whole Ben Simmons and Philadelphia and all that, well, is, I don't think Ben Simmons has the mentality that he, he wants to get what needs to get done. And you're, 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 you're in a town where they had Allen Iverson. They had Dr. J. They had Moses Malone. Uh, hell, Mo Cheeks. You know, Philadelphia is the most difficult city to play in sports. Worse than New York, worse than Boston, worse than L.A. So... Any distraction, any mishap. Hell, it's hard enough already when you got everything running right. So now if you have a distraction, the only guys that were able to play with distraction just happened to be Kobe and Shaq. But that's because they were out of this world talented to the to beyond. Like imagine if those guys got along. We would have never seen. We would have never seen. And, of course, not having David Stern change the rules every five minutes to, to combat what they were doing. You know, because he never did that to Jordan. He opened the doors for Jordan. He never opened anything up for Kobe and, and Shaq because that's kind of how he was. So we got to, we got to, as a Laker fan right now, as a competitive thing, the thing going on with Kyrie and the thing going on in Philly, that's just two less teams that we're going to have to deal with in the finals should we get there. And, and I, also, well, you also go out to mention a better. You know, it, it could be worse. It could be the vetting process that the Las Vegas Raiders made when they hired John Gruden. Because my, how do you let that stuff go? That stuff is just t you know years of stuff that he put out there, and yeah. This well, I, I think I think the John Gruden thing is similar to kind of, and I'm not comparing the uh, uh, personal stuff. Well, I'm talking I, about the that's mentality. What happens, well, that's what happens when you just look at the person on ESPN. You hear what he's saying, and on you go, oh, yeah, he might be a great coach. You I know? was just talking about this with my buddies, okay? Because everybody, once we found out he, you know, you know, we're all sports guys, so we talk. He deserves He deserved the, the firing. He deserved the, no, oh, sorry, he deserved the resignation. I'm not, I, 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 I'm surprised at a couple of things he said, but I've, 
again, my my job, my life in my life and in business, there's there's little little things that you see with people and how they their infliction in their voice, the way they look at you, the way their body language is. You know, when you start to get older and you start to see people. And of course, it's one of those things where my parents were very good at preparing my sister and I on how to spot stuff, right? So there was always this aura of fakeness with John Gruden, especially when he did that quarterback school crap. Yeah. I'd be sitting there and I'm like, dude, the, the guy your interview is not that good. And you're kissing his butt. And, and, and his reaction after this was exactly how I thought he would react. He'd start apologizing. He'd start doing this. I'm sitting there going, Out you, you just, go, John. Out you, you go. You, you really – We've all said some things, you know, in our life that we regret. But he wasn't even a good coach for the Raiders. That's well, okay, that way. back to the coach thing. So John Gruden, and I'm I'm just talking about coaching here. I'm not talking about the other stuff. There was a lot of talk uh, around 2000. No, I'm sorry, 2010, where Bill Cower, because I'm a big Steeler fan, Bill Cower might come back and whatever, whatever. And I'm like, this this era is not going to work for Bill Cowher, just like how it didn't work for Michael Mike Sing Singleton. It's not going to work. He's that guy was a drill sergeant or a drill instructor. There's no way that that will resonate now. And that was back in 2010. Now it's even worse. Now you need right. now you got you, you know you, you got guys like McVeigh who are running to Deshaun Deshaun Jackson while he's dancing before he gets on into the. End zone, which me being, I guess, the boomer, I'm 43, but apparently I'm a boomer now. I'm sitting there going, I'm like, you lost a team a game doing that one time, and you're still doing it? Yet McVay's going over there. Sean McVay's going over there. Yay! All right. If you're not doing that, you're not going to be able to coach in the NFL. And okay. well, John Gruden John Gruden is an old school guy. I'm talking yeah, strictly well, from the from the from the football thing here. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, well, he wasn't I'm, even I'm, a good coach. I mean, they were lucky to be three and two. He's passed. He's yeah. He's. I, I don't know why. I think yeah, they signed him to a ten year deal. That was that's just ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, boy, that that's that's. Um, yeah, I know. He's, well, is he, I know. yeah. 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 There's enough of John Gruden. He can. You know, I don't even want to talk about him anymore. He's just. He's not even worth my time. But. <laughs> You know what, Joe, it's been great having you here. But, again, please be part of the conversation today at LakersBall.com. Before we head on out, my friend, what is hot right now that's the talk? What's the hot talk going on right now at LakersBall.com? As far as the team. Besides Kyrie Irving. Well, again, it's we're, that was a few weeks ago. But I think that the discussion right now is who's, who's going to – uh, how this team is going to play this first couple weeks. Uh, Laker fans are extremely impatient. Uh, I'd say maybe our group is a little bit more patient than most Laker groups, um, but that's because we don't have a lot of guy, a lot of people in our in our, in our form. You're, you're talking maybe maybe two three thousand people, if that. But I'm I'm going to brace myself for the the what have you done for me lately thing, but. I, I I don't I want effort. I, I feel like there hasn't been effort. And LeBron set the table saying he didn't care about preseason. And again, when your leader's doing that, now you're like, okay, well, I guess we're gonna eat the the preseason. But I want effort. I want some semblance of organization. So Frank Vogel has to take a little bit of heat. And not having his guys at least running the fundamentals this first few games. And hopefully tomorrow and in the last game, they can get some momentum from that. And if that happens, then there's a lot of logical and common sense people on Laker ball uh, that are going to, you know, see that. Uh, the game time thread, which is the instant discussion thread, has been – I haven't noticed any of the usuals from last year that were belligerent on some of the discussions to the point where some of the mods are like, look, relax, stop doing this, stop criticizing guys when they don't make one basket and this, this, and that. It, it does get kind of childish. You know, you, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta, it's 82 games in the year. You, they're going to stink sometimes. 
But we're in a in a culture now where, man, you mess up once and you're toast. And I'm like, sometimes the other team plays well too, you know. And I, I, we lose focus in that. Part of the show, part of this kind of our show of becoming, you know, kind of next level, maybe something more original is I want to I want to get to the point where we can really diagnose the game and teach the audience why things happen instead of getting emotional about it and getting belligerent and saying, hey, Russell Westbrook, you know, really, really sucks and he's never going to win anything. No, you can say he stinks for a game. I'm not saying don't do that. But to say he sucks and he'll never win, like those are the things that get kind of just kind of tiring to hear. He doesn't suck, okay? His game is what it is. He's been playing like this. He's going to be a future Hall of Famer. He's The guy had four years of triple doubles for the entire season. you have any idea how hard that is? So now you're in a situation where you're going to have to acclimate your game into uh, you know, a championship team again. You got to be reasonable. You know, you got to understand Rondo is a good example of, you know, Rondo's going to make dumb passes in game uh, 54 in January. He's going to make the dumbest pass. But, man, he sure makes the right pass when it's the second round of the playoffs. Sometimes you got to just roll with it (laughs) and not get belligerent and not be just a a, a crazy person calling everybody names and, and saying they stink and they should go to an island. Again, I'm not saying I haven't done that, okay? But as you mature and you start thinking better, hey, you know what? Maybe that's pretty counterproductive. So, uh, again, we're, we're going we're gonna to have some good discussions, I think, in the next few weeks when the season starts. And I'm going to start talking to the crew about really building up the, the numbers for our show. And it's going to be much easier to build those numbers up when there's really good commentary after real games matter. So that's where we'll be. Once again, you can check out Ox1947, a.k.a. Joe Sorrell, at LakersBall.com. Be part of that great conversations that they're having today and in upcoming days, especially during the season, at LakersBall.com. Well, Joe, great to have you here, part of the program once again. Finally got the timing worked out. Hopefully the Dodgers will recover. Glad to see John Gruden on his way out. That's a little beside, but maybe the Dodgers, like I said, will pull through. Looking like uh, that they're going to have to go ahead and get a little bit more offense. Any last thoughts on the way out? Well, I, they're going to have to beat, the, the record-wise, the best team in the league, not only here tomorrow, but in San Francisco against their ace. But I didn't think they we would lose a game where – Max Scherzer would throw 10 strikeouts and only allow one run. This was a classic baseball situation. Only in baseball where something like this would happen. This doesn't happen in football. This doesn't happen in basketball. Never does does things like this happen other than in baseball. And it is, it's almost to the point where I don't get the, I'm not depressed at this point because how does this happen? You're, you're in astonishment. So we're going to be killing our fingernails in the next day or so. Hopefully we win tomorrow and then pull something out of our hats in San Francisco again. But this was a stupid loss. They should have won this. They should have won this game. They'd be up 2-1. They wouldn't have to go back to San Francisco. They'd have... A bullpen game tomorrow, but, you know, Arias would have been available if he'd have to throw in Bueller, but it's it's tragic. It's tragic that they lost one to nothing at home after dropping nine runs in San Francisco and you can't get one run at home. It's just mind, it's mind-boggling. I don't even know what to say. Well, and as far as – again, as far as as far as far Vegas and, and this Raider thing um, and, and Gruden, uh, I, I will be in shock if we ever hear from John Gruden again. Uh, maybe in five years when things have settled, but he, oh, it was it, it, it's it was very Donald Sterling like, and Donald Sterling, I saw that was a piece of crap for years. Um, 
Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 but you cannot let that stuff slide I, anymore. You, you, you know who I feel bad for? In the first place. You know who I feel bad for? You know who I really feel bad for? I feel bad for his wife. I feel bad for his kids, his family. You know, um, it's that they're, they're they they're gonna have to they're gonna have to deal with this. Look what happened with Urban Meyer. You know, Urban Meyer is gonna be associated with. Yeah, your Urban Meyer is doing whatever he's doing. His wife, her, for all we know, the wife, his wife was at home, you know, entertaining friends and minding her own business. You know, taking care of the kids, whatever. And now she's getting destroyed by these freaking idiots on Twitter. You know, how about going after Urban Meyer, the guy that actually did it? She's like, you know, to me, that's the part that bothers me. Being a family man, this is the risk of all this stuff. The risk is your family has to deal with it and your friends, and they don't have anything to do with it, yet people go after them. That's the only bad part about this. That's the part I don't like. Now, John Gruden's going to have to live with what he did, and he will, and... Urban you know, Meyer is going to have to deal with that. And Urban Meyer, <laughs> he'll be going to USC soon. Mark. Come on, Don't really? Look. I mean, Urban Meyer is going to be back in college football and winning USC. games. I'm telling you, USC. If he, he goes can to recruit. The only yes. thing he can do is he can recruit. That's all he, he tried. He tried it. He tried it. Urban yeah, Meyer is a that. cowboy, and it's easier to be a cowboy. In the, the amateur Jags games, have lost twenty in a row. <laughs> yeah. right but yeah. I'll tell you what: for the rest of the week, it is going to be a lot of Lakers stuff going on. We've got the Lakers uh, coming up as far as on Tuesday. We're going to go ahead and give you the post game on that. I've got as many team previews as I can get in. If I can't get them all in separately, I'm going to do a bulk one and cover everybody else. So we will make sure and do team previews of the NBA with everybody out there. Want to give you a heads up on that? On that social media thing at Lakers Fast Break on Twitter. Lakers fast break at yahoo.com. I know Joe is Joe Sorrel five on Twitter. There yes. you go. Joe Sorrel five. five on Twitter. I was and surprised. Please. I was surprised at that one. There you go. So <laughs> please go ahead and check out Joe Sorrel five on Twitter. And then also as well, our friends at hoopheadspod.com. Well, Joe, it's been great talking to you again. Looking forward to our next conversation coming up here soon. Hopefully we can sneak one in before the season start uh, for the season starts. Looking forward to that. Hopefully hear, hear more, maybe. In fact, I'm hoping for better things. I'm hoping for a little bit ramped up performance. We are going to get a taste of the big three playing together. So hopefully that'll give us a little bit better clarity on the season going forward. But again, I'm trying to temper my pessimism in this case in regards to how bad they played and look forward to more optimistic things in the future with the Lakers because I feel like it's still going to be a fantastic season. I'm looking forward to what's going on. Hopefully THT, Trevor Reza, and also Malik Monk will be on the mend very soon. But I'll tell you what, Joe, it's been great having you on. I'm looking forward to talking to you just before the season starts right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.